Hi and welcome back to another TechMinds video. So in this video, we're gonna be taking a look at the MFJ1234 Rig Pi Station server. Now this has kindly been loaned to me by Moonmaker.eu so I could have a play with it and create a little test video. So firstly, what is a Rig Pi Station server? Well, it essentially is a Raspberry Pi with an audio interface board, and this interfaces directly with your shack radio and allows you to remote control it from anywhere in the world just using a web browser on any device. Now, the station server itself is powered from a five volt USB power supply. Now, please bear in mind that you will need a good two to three amp power supply to run the system. A regular dedicated Raspberry Pi power supply should be okay. Now the radio's RX and TX audio is shared between the station server and your remote device such as a mobile phone or a tablet using a voice over IP server called Mumble. Now this voice server is pre-installed and auto starts when the station server is booted up. Now the radio's frequency and mode is controlled by cat commands using the popular Hamlib library which supports over 200 radio models. Now this also supports rotator control, so if you are working remotely and need to point your beam in another direction, this can be easily done using the web interface provided. CW is also fully supported with a Kia speed control on the front of the station server and an intuitive web page where you have control over what is sent. The server also has a range of preloaded digital mode applications, so if you fancy working a bit of FTA or RITI, then the software is already installed. To access this remotely, you would need to use an application such as VNC Viewer to remotely view the station's desktop. Now the MFJ1234 also supports multiple users. This means that you can have more than one operator using the station server at any one time. Also, they can use different radios. So let's take a quick look at this in use. Now for demonstration purposes, we have my iPad running there. That's just connected to my local Wi-Fi connection. The station server itself is actually wired into my local area network via a LAN cable. And as you can see here, I'm controlling the frequency uh, of my radio just by spinning the little control round uh, on the web page there. That's actually a web page. It's not a dedicated app, it's, it's a web page. You can see the red bar at the top of the app at the top of the iPad. That's just showing that the Mumble client, the software which receives and sends the audio between the iPad and the RigPi station server is active. Uh, this is M0DQW, Mike Zero Delta Quebec Whiskey Listening MP. Oh, sunny Milton Keynes. Well, it, actually, it's sunny here today. Uh, I'm just uh, down in Great Missenden, and uh, I'm just trying out a uh, a new bit of kit. It's a MFJ1234, and uh, I'm actually talking to you through my iPad at the moment, um, connected uh, over my local area network to the uh, to the MFJ1234 Rig Pi Station server. Um, I wonder what the audio sounds like. I'd, I'd imagine it probably sounds a bit echoey because I'm recording this and a few inches away from the uh, from the iPad. But uh, I wonder if you can still uh, still hear me. Okay, uh, back to you. So the received audio there was coming directly from the iPad over the local area network from the station server. 
Now when you order the RigPi station server, you're probably going to need to use an audio cable. This one here that you can see on the screen, this is for my FT991. You get the cable which plugs into the accessory port jack and the other end plugs into the station server. You'll also notice in the bag there's a little PCB which needs to be inserted into a socket within the actual rig station server itself. This is because obviously the audio cables can vary on the different types of pin configurations depending on which radio you're connected to. So all you need to do is just pop off the cover of the RigPi station server, locate the little audio interface board which is at the top. There's two little screws which you can just undo and the cable's flexible enough for you to pull back and see the socket. Once you've inserted the little PCB into the IC socket, just put it all back together and then plug the cable into your radio. The other connections on the station server would obviously be your 5 volt power supply. I'm using a LAN connection and obviously I've got USB to USB for the CAT control. Now I'm not going to go into too much detail about how you configure and set this up in this particular video, but once you actually have your RigPi station server connected to the network, find out its IP address, type it in and you're presented with your account editor. This is where you can set up a new account by putting in your call sign, your username and password which will give you access to the RigPi server. You'll also have to go to your radio settings page where you can select the appropriate settings for CAT control to your specific radio. What you also find is once you're logged in is you're going to find some other useful features. One of the useful features here is actually a DX spotter like a DX cluster. This is very useful and it's updated live if your machine is connected to the internet which of course it would be if you're using it remotely. Well there we go guys, that's a brief overview of the MFJ1234 RigPi station server. I hope you enjoyed the video, uh, this is a really cool little gadget, I always love experimenting and playing around with things like this, so big thanks to uh, moonraker.eu for sending me uh, this product to, uh, to take a look at. If you want to know more about it or even buy one, go and visit their website, I'll leave a link down in the description below. Don't forget if you want to, you can follow me on Twitter, I'll leave the handle down below and also check out my patreon page i've also just launched a merch store so if you fancy a bit of uh, clothing with uh, the tech minds logo uh, check out the uh, the link in the description below anyway have a great rest of the day and i'll see you guys in the next video